Okay, damn, One Piece, One Piece, One Piece, Chapter 18. Damn. Five days and five nights. Constant battle. Damn. Damn. That's all I can say, man. Like, this dude, Jack, when he transforms, that's such a badass design. Like, I love that design. But Luffy made the point I was thinking. If this guy's just an underling of Kaido, if he's just an underling, how powerful is Kaido? How powerful is Kaido if this is just an underling? Good Lord. No wonder Doflamingo told uh, Law that, hey, you guys are screwed. You guys are screwed. Now I see why. If that's just an underling, woo. Woo. Good Lord. Good Lord. This ain't going to end pretty. This ain't going to end pretty. But, I mean, I, I, let, me, let me backtrack real quick. So, what I did like, I did like how, you know, we find out that for five days and five nights, it's just constant battles shifting back and forth. And they had a brilliant battle strategy. One, one set of soldiers fights for 12 hours. The other set fights for 12, and they just keep rotating. And while they did beat back a lot of uh, Jack's forces, they could never stop Jack. But on the flip side, the two kings couldn't be stopped as well. And I'm like, okay, so they're basically fighting to a stalemate. Even when the reinforcements show up, they're still fighting to a stalemate. I'm going, okay, I can rock with that. That's cool. I can totally understand that. But then you see where things just get dark. Jack says, okay, I had enough of this. And he shoots off that gas that Caesar has. He shoots off that gas. And then all of a sudden, people just start dropping like flies, man. People start dropping like flies. And it's just like, good Lord. This is a, this is a game changer, man. This is a game changer. It's like chemical weapons in warfare now. Like, whoa. It ain't fair, man. That's the only thing I can say. Like, it ain't fair. To have to fight against something like that, it ain't fair. But at the same time, like, you know, you just got to look and see where Oda's taking this. You got to look and see where Oda's taking this. But when all the people are knocked out, paralyzed, unable to move, Kaido's men just walk around. Where's the, where's the samurai from Wano? I don't know. They knew those people were telling the truth. Still slaughtering them for an entire day, just taking their time, killing people off, torturing people, crucifying people. Oh man, this is like this is some dark stuff, man. This is some dark stuff. I can't stress that enough, man. This is some really dark stuff. And what I really like is how you know when Zoro hears it, right? Zoro's just like, okay. okay. He's making a face like, these are some little tough bastards right here. But then when he hears, when he hears that the killer gas spread through our land with the force of a blast, that dude Zoro's off the wall, and he's just looking. And I think, I think at that moment, I think Zoro's assessing the situation, saying, what the fuck do we get ourselves into? You know, Luffy's just listening like this shit story time. And even with Frankie, and the way Frankie's drawn, Frankie's like, oh shit. Oh shit, this is this is about to this is about to hit the fan. And I like how after they leave, after Kaido's men leave and they only leave a few people there, we find out that you know the rest of the straw hats had actually arrived. So Sanji's team. Sanji's team arrives. And what we end up finding out is that they stumble across Pedro, and Pedro's like, keep the two kings alive. They mustn't die for any reason. And it's just like, okay, that's some loyal shit, but, you know, what makes them so special over anybody else? And that's actually my chapter question. What makes them so special over anyone else? But what I like, what I like about this is the fact that, you know, when Sanji gets there, you know, Caesar's like, oh, shit, I'm not going up that elephant's ass. Fuck that. And I had always wondered, how did how they get up there? Did Sanji carry them? Nah, man. Sanji looked at that shit and said, yo, this dude Caesar, 
This man can make himself a balloon and carry us up there. <laughs> that's that that's that wonky one piece shit, man. I love it, man. I love that aspect of it. And that's when we find out, like, oh, Nami's run into this squirrel. And the squirrel's just like, oh, that, that woman talked. I can't believe it. Oh, it's a talking skeleton. And, you know, Brooke was able to take out, you know, the officer Kaido that was chasing. So it does show that, like, when it comes to Kaido's uh, underlings, I mean, there's different layers. There's different levels to it. But the fact that this is fodder and someone like Brooke, who's one of the stronger straw hats... Is fighting against him. Granted, you know, Brooke did one shot him, but I mean, it is something that worries me a little bit. It is something that worries me. I don't know where they're going to stack up, man. So, once again, just to restate the chapter question, you know, why is it that you think that the two kings who are being crucified, why do you think that there was so much emphasis put on saving them? Do you think it's for leadership purposes? Or do you think that they, they, at that time, Pedro was still thinking, we got a counterattack. What do you guys think about that? But as always, guys, if you like anything I had to say, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and share. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Have an awesome day, guys.